Saint Victor Herbin the Third, and I'm taking it to the house. I need no introduction. Y'all know who I am. Y'all know I am a fan. I am that dude. I'm from Dodger Town, USA. Man, Major League Baseball starts and begins and ends with Dodger City, baby. By the way, I'm Dr. Timothy Hoover, and I'm hyped. I haven't seen y'all since we won the World Series, so we're going to be talking about that for the next 20 to 25 minutes. What's up, partner? How you feeling over there? Westside? Look, if they thought we look, not like us, that's what Kendrick Lamar says. It's not like us. It's not like us. And those who had to deserve, bro, you know, let me just slow down. People had the nerve <laughs> to say that we need to be the asterisk in 2020. Look, everyone who played the game, they played the game. But if you thought that was uh, 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 an act, if you thought that was uh, uh, a contender, not to pretend, all that kind of stuff, that did we show them this year? And guess what? Yes, sir. We had yes, a sir. Full stable of, of pitching. We went all through the New York. We cleaned the New York's clock. The Mets wanted some <laughs> of that business. The Yankees wanted some of that business. And little brother up the street in San Diego wanted some of that business. <laughs> now, like, like Jack said, when he won that first championship without Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. <laughs> You know what I think, bro? I think the Yankees weren't even the best team in the league, in the city, in their own city. I don't think they were the best team in their own city. So we, we wanted to start a new segment, penthouse to the outhouse, outhouse to the penthouse. I don't know what you want to call it, but the penthouse solely belongs to the Dodgers, the outhouse. That would be the blunders the Yankees made in that series. What? How? Man, after 162 games, after you get through the playoffs, after you get to the highest point, highest level, how do you make these mistakes? These are minor league mistakes. These should not be happening. You're supposed to be the epitome of the, the standard bearer for your league, the American League, to come into and really hand the game over, that game, uh, to, to, the, to the Dodgers. We're talking about not covering first base. We're talking about a, a, a short stop going to third base and not being able to make the throw. And then Aaron Judge, a routine pop fly. Come on. These are, these are just minor league. These are minor league. When I talk minor league, I'm not talking about minor league pro level. I'm talking about minor league our level. Kids, we're talking about basic fundamental baseball. Come on, Yankees. You, you were supposed to be better than that. But however, comma, you're going to make those mistakes, give us five runs, and we're going to take advantage of it? Oh, my goodness. And we took it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As you said, thank you. Good night. Look, fifth inning. I will <laughs> tell you, bro. I will tell you. We already know we went into game four, up 3-0. They said it's going to be a bullpen game. I, I understand what they talk about the bullpen game. I still don't like it. I Hey, let's go in for the win. Let's go for the kill. Let's go for the sweep. Got it. So we took the L. We took the L. But, man, going to the fifth game, it's like, okay, this is it. Let's go ahead and close this out. Do not need to take this back to L.A. We don't want to play around. Judge is in a slump. Soto is dangerous. Stanton, look, we don't need to give these guys more opportunities than necessary. We already, already had to experience the pain of watching Shohei get hurt. I wonder if he's done for the series. Like, that that was so much could have happened. So going into game five, it's like, look, bros, we need to close this out. We, we cannot play around with this team. We cannot play. We do not need to be that first team that loses the series up 3-0. So right. as we're watching the game, it's like, man, these guys have come awake. This is the biggest fear. We did not want to come back to L.A. tied 3-3, you know, or, or going for the game six. So fifth inning comes, and we're down 5-0. It's like, man, do we wave the white flag? Something's telling me, still watch it. Watch it. Yogi Berra says it ain't over till it's over. But, man, I, <laughs> I was, I'm going to tell you, I was shook. And, and my confidence waned. And I lost faith in the boys because I said, man, maybe they are playing for another day. Maybe they do want to bring this back to L.A., but, man, don't do it like this. At least make this respectable. And then Aaron Judge dropped the pop ball, the pop fly ball. Uh-oh. And then you see we're running on first, then a second, then on third. 
end, as you stated, like a comedy of errors. All I need to hear is the Benny Hill song. I mean, okay, I'll take it. And man, it was amazing. And just yes. to watch it, but to your point, you know, that's as a Dodger fan, but then as a baseball fan, disappointed. Like, you yeah. are supposed to be the best of the best. You not only that, you're the Yankees. And you talk about the star players are folding under the pressure. And but uh, as a fan, it, it 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 like I said, as a this baseball fan, it was sad to watch because you want to see the best version of the Yankee team, right. even if that's their, their if even if they're gonna lose that game, don't do it like that. Don't lose like that. But as a Dodger fan, of course, it, a, a win's a win. But man, yes, talking about losing a voice, bro. Oof. Yeah, you talk. You you mentioned game four. You know, we go to the bullpen. Yes, we want. I wanted a sweep, but uh, my MVP is Dave Roberts, man, because he was playing chess, not checkers. I'm thinking about Denzel and training day. This is chess, not checkers. You know, and so everything matched up. The long game, the chess game. It's not about right now. So he's strategizing. Everybody else is being tactical. No, he's gonna. Yeah, we might win if I throw the bullpen out there in, in game four. We might win, but if we lose, no, it's about down the road. It's about setting up Yamamoto. It's, it's setting up uh, uh, Bueller. It's setting everybody up to include, we're not going to talk about the Bueller coming and closing out the fifth game. That comes later. But Dave Roberts, my MVP, and that was a melon game. He punted. You're right. He punted. Um, what I was doing in game five, five instead of four, in game five, what I was doing is like you, man, five runs, 5-0, and it's the World Series, and I was pissed. Bruh, I was pissed. The fan in me, I it, I was upset that we allowed ourselves to get, get them, allowed them to get a little bit of momentum, a little bit of confidence up, and they were swinging the bats. Remember in game four, man, they put double digits on us, bruh, and they were hitting that ball, cacao, pow, 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 pow. I was like, oh, hell. Man, I was getting rubbernecked, you know, just watching them go. And so I moved. I got a big screen TV. I moved the game, game five, off the big screen TV. I put it on my iPad, and it was white noise, okay? That was me. I was pissed. I was like putting the little kid in the corner. You go over there. But I kept peeking. <laughs> I, I kept peeking over there. And, okay, that, that, that you want to give us a few runs? No, you know. You're supposed to step on a joker's neck, okay? I, I'm not a fan of what they did to Rodney King, but you're supposed to do a Rodney King, and you know my reference. You're supposed to make him feel it, and the Yankees did not make the Dodgers feel. They didn't feel stressed. They didn't feel pressured. They just performed. I'm talking about the Dodgers just performed. Because if you think about it, when Mookie hits the ball, it's kind of a – a squibber to first base and uh, your, your pitcher doesn't cover first base, Mookie hustled. He could have been out still, but he hustled down the line. And and and, and so I, I got to give it to, to, to Mookie and the Dodgers for being steadfast. Okay, yeah, we're down 5-0, but the game ain't over, as, to your point. And they played the doggone game. I must transition, though, to the series MVP. We talked about Dave Roberts. My, he's, he gets my vote, but deservedly, uh, your boy Freddie Freeman. Freddie, 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 Freddie freaking Freeman. My goodness. We're talking about, yeah, the grand slams, the multiple home runs, consecutive games. Bruh, I don't think he's sweat. I don't think he's sweating yet. I think he can get into a, a sauna and not sweat on a bum leg. Well, thank goodness to the trainers, to Steady, uh, Steady Freddy is what I want to call him, to Freddy's being, you know, just a professional, you know, a hitter's hitter. And congratulations, Freddy, uh, for being recognized as the World Series MVP. You deserved it. You mentioned Otani getting hurt. We didn't need Otani because everybody else seemingly just stepped up. But Otani's presence was enough for, for just being there and still being speed 
on the base pad. So being a presence. And so, oh man, way to go, Freddie. Way to go. And Dave Roberts is my MVP. Bruh. I think in the spirit of Halloween, I can imagine in New York, they're calling him Freddy Krueger Freeman because he was a nightmare on everyone's street. <laughs> that joke has struck terror every time he came up the bat. Man, I he was, bruh, because when I see yep. him, I'm glad he's on our team. Because I do remember yes. how he hurt us when he was the Braves. And to yes. know this dude is dangerous, <laughs> man. And he's our guy. He's our guy. Yes. And just imagining the number one lineup, you got Otani. Then you got Mookie. Then you got yep. Freddie. I mean, that is murderous row. And he leads. Yes. They, they made them pay. And as he was just performing, and bro, he hobbled into the playoffs. He hobbled into yes. the playoffs. And, and to perform. And as you start, you talked yes. about that error from the uh, first baseman and Mookie run it out. I think that epitomizes the Dodgers hustle and grit. Yes. Never, never say never attitude. And here is Freddie. There's, I forget what game one or game two, he was battling. He had to come out early. I mean, so yeah. when we watch what he was able to do, he struck nightmares, bro. Nightmares. And just his tenacity and this, the difficulty of pitching. But I will go back to that grand slam because I said, oh, my goodness, it brought back <laughs> memories of 1988 with Kirk Gibson. But for that to be yes. the first game, it was like, okay, we could not make this home run iconic hit go in vain. And, man, with this the sweet sound coming off his back. I mean, who thinks about it, man? Bases loaded. Just any, like, yeah, game I mean, over. I mean, bro, I got that. I saved that video, and I've been watching that video at least once a week. Like that is so. That's just king. It's like done. Like everyone when he hit it, I don't care where you at in the world. <laughs> that is gone. It was just like show stopping, jaw dropping, eye popping, done. Woo! Like like <laughs> it was just. Crazy, and then he performed yeah. every game, man. It was just yeah. amazing. And as you stated, can they leave Dave Roberts alone? Tommy Lasorda got his two World Series. Dave already got two, and Dave just getting started. Dave just gets to leave him alone. That dude, you have to be a great coach, great manager to get to at least seven uh, championship games. You have 162 games. Plus playoffs, man. Do you remember yeah. early in the season when Mookie got hurt? You, you yes. Peyton got hurt. Justin May. You had he had to manage through all this stuff to still get here. Yes. And no one. Yes. I watched ESPN. I watched Fox Sports. I watched FS1. I watched all that, and everyone had the nerve, bruh. They still wouldn't pick us to go anywhere. They picked the Padres to beat us. They picked the Phillies. Then they picked the the uh, the Yankees. So we come in here as underdogs when we had the number one record in the league. Talk about disrespect. So yes, Dave Roberts, if we trust, leave the man alone, give him his flowers while he's still here. The team, did you see how much love the team had for him when they were presenting yes. the, 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 the the championship and the MVP? They all said, this is our guy. Man, oh, bro, I, I got to pass it back to you real quick because I'm, I'm hyped. <laughs> And, and and if you're listening and watching this show right now, you're saying, man, it was just a World Series. Okay, the Dodgers won. They had the highest payroll. And why are you guys so hyped? Well, I'm going to explain that to you right now because in 2020, it was a COVID ravaged season. And we won it. We won it just like everybody else wanted it. But we stood out on top. But you know what was a bad about 2020? We didn't get a parade. We did not get a parade. So for about four years, we've been starving just for a parade. Yeah, you can have a parade and not win, but we wanted a parade and win. Okay, so we won and I'm hyped. 
And four years ago, my partner said, if you don't like the station, change the channel. We're talking about the Dodgers today, okay? We are hyped because we won the damn thing, and we're going to be talking about it for another year. Yes, we had the highest payroll. Yes, we had high expectations. Yes, we were injured. People suffer from injuries. But you know what? We are the last man standing. We are the last team standing. And I say we, it's a collective. Dave Roberts on down, but you know, we got to go to management who don't mind paying to go get the players. We got other owners that won't because they are all about collecting the money instead of spending the money. How about doing both? If you want to win, you got to go get it. You're a billionaire. Go get it. Earlier, I was talking about Bueller. Bueller closed out game five, bruh. We're talking about Bueller who was hurt. Okay, sat out a season. We're talking about Bueller, who used to throw 100 miles per hour. That, that, that's the end thing, to throw 100 miles per hour. You have a, a, a Tommy John surgery. I think he had two, if I'm not mistaken, but we have to fact check that. And then he comes back. Okay, he starts, he's nails when he started. And I talked about the long game earlier. Dave Roberts, man, you don't have to tell me nothing. Matter of fact, and Dave, we trust. If you want Bueller to come and close the game in game five, nobody else saw it coming. I didn't see it coming. Bueller is going to be that guy to close out game five. And when he comes out there, bro, he's doing it. He reminds me of your boy from the Atlanta Braves. Man, I, the picture right now escapes me. But you don't have to throw 100 miles per hour. It's all about placement. And that's what Bueller was doing, was placing the ball. Maddox. Uh, Maddox. There we go. Maddox. Maddox was that dude. And Bueller reminded me of Maddox. It was ball placement. It was just keeping them where they couldn't get comfortable in the box and was strike, 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 strike. Beautiful. So... In, in some of the interviews, Bueller had not ever done this, that to my knowledge, in the pro level as a reliever. And then you magnify it being in the World Series. He comes out as a re comes out to relieve, and you're on the road at that, and you're going up against some studs, man. The Bronx Bombers. I don't care. It's a short porch, still in right, and it doesn't matter who's up to bat. You still got to play to win the game. Bueller comes out there and some of the interviews said he didn't know what he was going to be capable of doing, but he wanted to try. He wanted to test himself. And you mentioned earlier about grit. You talk about, and people think about LA and Hollywood and, and stars and, and we're pampered. No, what they saw in the Dodgers were rolling up the sleeves, getting down and dirty with it, whether it's the short ball, long ball, small ball, fast ball, whatever they needed to do, they did it and were fundamentally sound and they made the least amount of mistakes and they had to me the better and timely pitching oh to, to say the least about the hitting we talked about the hitting they were just the better team the best team won the series and that's why we're happy i hope you understand better now if you're listening to us for the first time i get it we're too hyped we're two little dudes. We're from the West Coast, and we're talking all Dodgers. You may be a Mets fan, producer Steve. You may be a Yankees fan. Whoever you are, just give us a little grace. We'll be okay. Next show, as a matter of fact, we'll probably talk something else like football because it is football season. But right now, we're going to give all the shine to the Dodgers because it happens to be our home team. Give us a little grace. Bruh, the other thing, you know, it's scary. It should be scary for the rest of the league. Otani had a phenomenal season as a designated hitter. That dude went 50 plus, 50 plus. And then uh, he 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 wasn't a big factor in the World Series, which is right. scary. Mookie, Kiki, Tiasco Hernandez, Freddie Krueger Friedman, Will Smith, Max Muncy, uh, championship uh, uh, MVP, uh, NLG, admin. I mean, do I, dare I say more? And Otani was able to rest. Unlike he could do those seven years, he was in, in Los Angeles Angels. So they didn't even get to fill that piece. Next year, <laughs> next year, that dude's pitching. We're talking about Bueller. Is Kershaw coming back? May, 
uh we got uh uh Yoma Ma- Yamamoto bruh that's just that's just, oh my <laughs> goodness that's just pitching and our offense is unparalleled and we run the table again because it's not a matter if we're going to make it a playoffs. We know we're making a playoffs. We've been making a playoffs the last seven, eight years. It's a matter of how how deep we go. And you add in Shohei, who is more than likely going to be the MVP again of the of the of the National League. But next year, he can put up about his 15 to 20 game uh wins, Cy Young winner. He can still hit hit the dingers, and he's gonna have a full year healthy. Yamamoto, bruh, a reload next year. It mm. it ooh wee and dare I say there's some free agents out there. I'm not saying Soto needs to come, <laughs> but I wouldn't be surprised how he felt watching how that how we uh celebrated champagne on their locker room. I, I'm sure yes. that made made him feel a certain kind of way because they put a microphone in front of his face. He's quick to say, <laughs> not so quick. <laughs> you know, this guy, like, I'm gonna compete like the rest of everybody because I see they're going over there in L.A. They look like they're having fun. Yeah. Yeah. You speak about uh, Otani pitching. I almost don't want him to pitch because I know it's going to take away from what he does uh, at the plate. And he's ferocious. You talk about that batting lineup, batting order uh, of him and Mookie and, and then Freddie and then whoever in the fourth, fifth, sixth uh, rest of the lineup. So part of me, I'd rather him just designate. But I also know they signed him for $700 million and they want every dollar out of him and i should too as a fan so what is it going to look like with him pitching and then what about the off days is he going to be at rest is he going to be a designated hitter what is that going to be like you talk about 50 and 50 take that out of the lineup where do you get that run production from you know we're not talking about rbis we're just talking about uh steals and uh home runs so i'd like to see how they're going to make up for that uh, on the base paths and uh, in the batting order. The other thing I, I'm concerned about is uh, his labrum. Uh, it's official. It was a labrum tear, but that's in his left shoulder. And so he pitches right-handed. He bats left. Cool, cool, cool. He's going to have to, it's going to require surgery. I expect a full recovery. He should be ready f- for training camp. Uh, so when, when it starts in, in March or whatever, April, March timeframe next year. But, uh, I, I, again, uh, I started off talking about my concern. I, I like this edition of Otani. What will his pitching do to take away from this edition of Otani and how will it affect the Dodgers and will they be able to accommodate or make up for his absence as a designated hitter? Well, I think I like to see the stats, and that's something we'll probably work with their, our st- uh, statistician team to find out what was um, – Bruh was still the MVP with the, with the Angels, pitching and hitting. And I believe he went 30 for 30 one year where he hit 30 home runs. And, and you know, so – but I, hmm. I, to your point, I like to see how did they manage the work-rest ratio. Okay, you pitch on day one. Are you hitting – days three through five, and then you back to pitch. Like, how mm-hmm. how did they work that in? But while mm-hmm. they may lose on the offensive side, <laughs> what they gain on the defensive side if he's pitching. Because are you mm-hmm. having any shootout? If we can give up 11 mm-hmm. runs because we had to go to a bullpen game, but if you have an Otani that could have bat, could hit on game game one, day, game one, and then on game four he's pitching, do they score 11 points? Do we have to do a bullpen game? Because now he mm. may have a two, three run uh, uh, ERA. And so are we mm-hmm. in a situation where uh, we're getting uh, the, the doors blown off of 11 runs? So it will be interesting how, again, and Dave, we trust. But precedence has been set. How were the Angels okay. able to do it? With a raggedy team, the Angels were. He never right. made it to the playoffs. And then you tell me his first year with the Dodgers, a reputable, respectable team, you don't just make it to the playoffs. Yeah, he went to freaking championship ring. So it will be interesting <laughs> as they, uh, as we have a quality care program, unlike the Angels, and how they will monitor. Uh, you know, look at what they did with Bueller. Bueller's come off two Tommy Johns, and they still were yeah. able to, you know, because that's something that uh, while I may also be upset with Dave at times, man, why the guy only pitched three or four innings? But obviously, he has a system. 
So even yes. if Otani is pitching, we can't expect he's doing a nine inning game. He may only do three or four innings enough just to say, hey, we did we did damage. Yeah. My middle relievers could take care of the next two or three innings, and then I'm gonna have my closers. Yeah. Okay. 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 And very good point because it's not like we're reinventing a bread or the wheel or whatever. Uh, we we it's it's there is a model out there that we can tailor to our uh, suit our needs. Um, well, bruh, man, thank you as our fans. We want to say thank you. We welcome you to come in. We welcome, we want to hear your opinions as well. And just give us a little grace. We, we, we had to do this. Uh, I feel better now. I got this off my chest. We want to celebrate the Dodgers. We're going to celebrate the Dodgers. But we also want to cel celebrate you, the fans, for, and, and for, for chiming in and paying attention to us. Uh, for the last few years. So so thank you, thank you, thank you. My last thought, last comment, uh, we had an election. Yes, and it happens every four years uh, when we have a vote. And I pray that you guys were able to have peace with your vote. Guess what? There's nothing else you can do about the results. So uh, the three of us, to include our producer, we're military men. We have uh, served so that you have the right to vote and we pray that you took that opportunity to go out and exercise that 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 right to vote red blue independent it really matters not it may not be your guy or your gal it matters not really what we want is a unified nation because we serve to protect this nation we have served to protect this nation and this flag means a little bit more to most of us when, especially when you're on foreign soil. So the American flag is what we defend and it is one country indivisible under God. Have we seen this story before? Have we played this out before? Yes, but we don't serve really one man. We don't serve man, we serve God. So I pray that you find peace. I pray you find peace, whoever you are, wherever you are, and keep on going about your, if you know God, find peace and you move on with your day. I'm Dr. Timothy Hoover, and I'm taking it to the house. Hey, thanks, Unc. I would say, just to dovetail on that, yes, it's the political season. At the end of the day, team, I'm an American. It does not matter if we're Republican or Democrats, we're American. And unfortunately, many times with elections, it creates divis divisiveness, but that's the beauty of America is that we come back together. So team, as we go, as we rally around doing the great things we can for this nation these next four years, let's just do what we got to do, be the best citizens we can be to love one another and continue making this the greatest country that it is. And what better thing than sports that rallies us all together? And next week, cannot yes. wait to talk about how the Ravens are dominating and who's going to be, who's halfway, who's the contender, who's the pretender, who's the chumps, who's the champs. We talk about the penthouse, the outhouse. There's some teams right now that we saw this last weekend <laughs> that are done. And then the college football playoffs is coming, team. And basketball is in real, in real season. So it is a great time. And, yes. This is our show. I ain't apologizing to nobody about nothing. We talk about the college because we can. Look, Steve, maybe one day we'll get the, the stuff that's that shine. But this is the L.A. Roger, L.A. Lakers show. We will do what we got to do. But look, it's been four years in the making since our last championship. But it's been since 1988 since we had a parade. So I ain't asked for no grace. I'm taking it. So again, we love you all. Had fun. Continue hollering at us. You got us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, X, whatever venue. We love corresponding with you all. Thank you all for the notes. And it's a great time. We're taking it to the house and Dr. Big Morale.